There's absolutely no question that the talking point right now among United fans is about our defensive setup and particularly our centre backs and the goalkeeper. That's where the problems seem to lie with Manchester United. When you watch United play well, it's about our attack playing brilliantly. When you watch United play badly, it's largely about our defence just imploding. So this video, I'm going to take a look at Gary Neville's comments on Monday Night Football about Lindelof, about Maguire, about De Gea, about the defensive setup at United and what he feels the problems are. I like doing these sort of analysis videos. If you do, make sure you drop a like on the video as well. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV and make sure as well, if you haven't already, join the Discord. There's a link in the description, an invite link. Come over there, it's free. There's a couple of thousand reds on there. We talk about stuff like this all the time in a bit more in depth. And it'll be good to have you on there. I do voice chats with all you guys as well. So it's a bit of an extension to the YouTube channel, if you want to call it that, and on Facebook too. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you drop a like. But let's talk about Gary Neville's analysis of United's defence and whether I feel he's right or wrong in what he had to say. And let's get straight into it. I'm going to run through the comments that Gary said and give my opinion on certain parts. So let's start. But you asked the question about pairings for Manchester United. And you go back to the two great pairings that Manchester United have had and the goalkeeper, because I've got to include the goalkeeper in this. That triangle of goalkeeper and two centre-backs are critical to a team that will win the league. First thing I want to point out there that Gary said that I think is absolutely critical and spot on, it is that trio, that relationship between the goalkeeper and our two centre-backs. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure De Gea has ever really had a solid relationship, really, with any of our centre-backs. De Gea is not that sort of vocal organising goalkeeper. He's a shot stopper. And he's great at doing that, but I would never say he's a, he's a goalkeeper that's got a huge... Maybe he does. And he's obviously his English has improved and that's helped him, but De Gea's not really that sort of goalkeeper. Not in the same way that Schmeichel was with Bruce and Palliser. Not in the same way that Van der Sar was with Ferdinand and Vidic. And that in itself has, has always been a problem and will always be a problem whilst De Gea is our goalkeeper. Schmeichel, Bruce and Pallister in the Premier League, 125 games, 2.2 points per game, 0.73 goals conceded, 59 clean sheets. And the key one is this. Van der Sar, Fernand and Vidic for five years, 96 games, 2.2 points per game, so massive points per game, but again, 0.72. So you could look at this in raw data and you could say to yourself, well, they played in great teams, that's why they won more points. Yes, but if you look at Ferdinand and Vidic, they had, a, they had a midfield in front of them of Scholes, Carrick, Giggs and Ronaldo. It's not really a defender amongst them. Now, I think this point here, this is a bit odd. Yeah, Carrick, Scholes, Ronaldo and Giggs may not be defensive, but they're all world-class players. And Carrick and himself in his career, he dropped deeper as he went along. And I think Scholes dropped deeper as he went along as well. And I don't even think Fred and McTominay are defensive midfielders, which I'll get into next. So I think for me, that comparison... It's a bit a slightly odd, in my opinion, anyway. And you look at this pair now of Lindelof uh, and Maguire, 51 games with De Gea, 1.8 points per game. So you could say that's down to the fact they're playing in a weaker team, but they can see the goal a game. And they've got Fred and McTominay in front of them. They've got two defensive midfield players sat right in front of them and they don't move. Sometimes Pogba plays there, sometimes... Now, here is where I definitely want to make quite an important point. I said it there previously, Fred and McTominay are not defensive midfielders. So Gary Neville needs to stop calling them defensive midfielders. Uh, McTominay is far better as a natural box-to-box -box midfielder. And Fred, when we interviewed him on the channel, he literally said, I want to be more attacking, but I'll play where, where the team, where the manager wants me to. Neither of them are defensive midfielders. And the only reason both of them play alongside each other is because they're not good enough on their own. I personally think that a world-class defensive midfielder who can actually screen the defence properly changes the whole setup of our two centre-backs in the same way that a goalkeeper would from behind. He would they would have the protection from behind with the goalkeeper in a relationship they build there and also protection from in front from that defensive midfielder who would actually screen the two centre-backs properly in a way that Fred and McTominay will never ever be able to do. Fred and McTominay are excellent at pressing a team squeezing the space out, chasing the ball down. But in terms of just sitting in front of that defence like Matic does and protecting them, it's not what they do. So for me, it's just as important to sign that defensive midfielder as it is to sort out our goalkeeper. Both of them are critical in getting the most out of our two centre-backs, as well as the two centre-backs themselves. 
But the key thing is at the bottom, only one of the last 20 Premier League champions has conceded one, uh, one goal per game or more. And that tells you that this here, this three of De Gea, Lindelof, Maguire, I don't disclude the full-backs from it because they have to come into it, but if you've got that three absolutely spot on, if you think of Alisson and Van Dijk being the final piece of the jigsaw for Liverpool, if you think of Diaz coming in now for City, if you think of company at City, you think of Vidic at Manchester United with Ferdinand, you think of all the teams that have won the league, that triangle of goalkeeper and two centre-backs are solid as a rock. They're dominant. And this three are not dominant. The keeper's not dominant at the moment, even though I thought he did OK yesterday. The two centre-backs, they're not dominant. They can see too many goals. And if you concede one or more goals per game, you're not going to win a Premier League. So Manchester United have to look at that. I'm not sure any of us can disagree with anything that Gary's saying here. Because David De Gea, Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof, if you look at them all individually, David De Gea, he is not a dominant goalkeeper. He's not the goalkeeper who's going to come out and punch that corner away for 20 yards. He's not going to be the, the goalkeeper who rushes out of his box and dominates and controls his 18-yard box. He's a, he's a goalkeeper who naturally sits on his line. He's not a goalkeeper who naturally goes and closes the space down in a way that Schmeichel did or Van der Sar did. And he never will be. He's a shot stopper, a very different type of goalkeeper. And in that sense, we're never going to get the dominance from De Gea whilst he is in goal. Harry Maguire, I think he can be dominant. I think Maguire's dominance, though, relies on having the partner that brings the balance out of him. And Lindelof is so not dominant. He can hardly win a ball in the air. Mourinho pointed out it was a weakness. It certainly is a weakness. We saw it there in the game at the weekend against West Brom, but we've seen it loads of times before. Lindelof will never be a dominant defender. Out of the three of De Gea, Lindelof and Maguire, Maguire is certainly the one that can have that dominance to his game. But for me, it's so important to get the right partner for him. And that's exactly what Gary goes on to talk about. Which do you fix first? The problem is they're not going to uh, turf Maguire out. They've invested £80 million. Pounds. He's the rock. He's the cornerstone. Played every think, minute this season. Yeah, played every minute. He's the one that they're going to build their defence around. So what you've got to do is find a partner for him. That's got to be somebody... I actually think it's got to be somebody of the uh, physicality and sort of what would be profile of Bailly actually. Someone who's quick, good in the air, strong, can cover Maguire one-on-one, -on -one, but also he's going to get them up the pitch and allow them to play a little bit higher. And then you've got to think about the goalkeeping situation. And I think the goalkeeping situation is going to need attending to quite quickly too. Gary there name-dropping Eric Bai, And for all of us, it, it, it's not hard to see that Bai brings a better balance to Manchester United's defence when he's playing alongside Harry Maguire than Victor Lindelof does. But for some reason, and this is down to Solskjaer, He's choosing Lindelof ahead of Bailly, even when Bailly is fit. That's because, for some reason, he trusts Lindelof. I don't know. Maybe Bailly has got some dirt on Oli that we don't know about. But the point there that Gary also makes that I suppose I haven't really thought about too much is, is, is United's defence sitting too deep. We saw it there with the Everton in the 3 all when we, we were sat too deep on the edge of our box for that last-minute free kick, and they ended up getting a nod on, the nod on, sorry, and they scored from it. Maguire and Lindelof, do they sit deeper because they're worried about people getting in behind them because they have a lack of pace? Potentially. And maybe that's why you bring someone like Bailly in because you know that you're always going to have that cover. That, that they can push further up because there's always going to be that defensive cover. If the ball does go over the top, Bailly will be able to have the pace to recover because you're not going to have the goalkeeper coming out and closing the space from the back in a way that Alisson does for Liverpool. And you're not going to have, right now, between Lindelof and Maguire a defender like Van Dijk, who has the pace to run back and cover that space. So if you're not going to have it from either side, you have to sit deeper to compensate. And clearly, that's what United are doing with Maguire and Lindelof. And Gary goes on to discuss that balance, or lack thereof, in a little bit more detail. And I think this is probably the most crucial point. Lindelof's problem is Maguire. Maguire's problem is Lindelof. I think that if you put Lindelof alongside Van Dijk at Liverpool and he was his partner... I think he's a fantastic... I think he's a really good player, Lindelof, by the way. I think he understands the game. I think he reads the game. I think he's a good defender. I think if he was alongside a Rio Ferdinand or a Van Dijk, I think he'd make a great pair. The problem is he's alongside somebody who isn't the most mobile in Harry Maguire. And I think that's the problem that Lindelof's got, is that actually they've invested £80 million in Harry Maguire, so they're going to need to put someone alongside him. Because I actually think Lindelof's a really good player. And if Liverpool were looking for a centre-back pair, in, you know, I think he'd do a really good job for Liverpool alongside Van Dijk or alongside a, a Ferdinand. 
But the problem is I don't think he does a good job alongside Maguire because they both just sort of just drop back a little bit and you need someone to get up the pitch. They've got to get up the pitch. They've got more front foot. They've got more aggressive. They've got to step past the striker. They've got to have the nerve. I said it a few weeks ago. They've got to have the nerve to make the stomach churn a little bit. That There's a bit too much space in behind them than they'd ordinarily think there would be. And that's what the best teams have. The key word, it's balance. And we don't have that balance with Lindelof and Maguire. On their own, in certain teams, as Gary says, if they've got the right partners, I think they could be excellent defenders. But together at United, it just doesn't work. Lindelof, instead of compensating for the weaknesses of Maguire's game, he exaggerates them. He makes them worse. And together, it's just massively unbalanced. Now, it's not to say that buying Maguire immediately gives United a Premier League title, because it does not. And I'll be honest, I don't think United will ever be able to do that until we find a player like Bai who has the reliability of Maguire. Because unfortunately for Eric Bai, I think the writing really is on the wall at this point in his career. It doesn't matter how many good games he comes in and has, he's going to get injured at some point within a two-month period and we're going to be back to square one. And you can't build a sustainable Premier League title push on that instability. And it might be harsh for me to say it, but I just don't really see a long-term future at Bayer, for Bay at United because of that. So what we need to find now as a club is a partner for Maguire. Because as Gary said there, Maguire is not going to get turfed out. Maguire is going to be the centrepiece of that defence. Because United have... Look, we paid £80 million for him. So we have to back him in that sense. And it's not just a case of backing him for no reason. I genuinely think if Maguire does have the right partner at United, he will look like a very different defender. And there's a lot of flaws to his game. But I think they get exacerbated by Lindelof being alongside him. And it just seems so much more comfortable when you've got Bay alongside Maguire. Now, wan Saka and Shaw, I'm sure they could help. And De Gea, certainly. Look, for me, I think I've said this before as well, and I'll probably do a full video on it, but if I was only going to Solskjaer this summer, I would try and sell David De Gea, use that money, invest that money in a centre-back, and bring Dean Henderson in. I think Dean Henderson has the capability of being a far more dominant goalkeeper for Manchester United than David De Gea ever will be. And if we're looking at the problems that we've got, because we've got a top draw... Looking forward, past the halfway line, we've got Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba. We've got Anthony Martial, we've got Marcus Rashford, we've got Mason Greenwood, we've got Edison Cavani. We've got enough there. Clearly, we've scored more goals in the Premier League than any team this year. We have enough going forward to challenge for the Premier League. But we've got a huge leak. We've got a burst pipe under the floorboards. And until we pull that pipe up, seal it, put it back down in the right condition, we're going to keep leaking goals left, right and centre. And if you can't, and look, as Gary pointed out there at the start of the video, you can't. there's no team that wins the Premier League who have conceded more than one or more goal per game, which is what United are doing right now. And it's, it's, we've seen enough of Lindelof and Maguire and De Gea as a trio to know that it just will not work. It's not all of a sudden going to change overnight. The problems are there. All three of them, they bring out the worst of each other. Like three, like the ugly sisters in Cinderella. I can't believe I just called them that. Sorry, guys. But Maguire, I still have belief in, if I'm being completely honest. De Gea, I think we've seen the best of him at Manchester United. And I feel that this summer would be a smart time for the club to move him on because we've got Dean Henderson ready and waiting to go. United typically, prior to David De Gea, when you look at us replacing Schmeichel, when you look at us replacing Van der Sar, actually not Van der Sar, so we replaced him with, uh, with De Gea, but... That period in between, we were terrible with goalkeepers. We've got it right since Van der Sar, and I think we can get it right post De Gea as well with Henderson. And I'd like to see that happen. And I think I've seen enough of Lindelof. I think Lindelof can stay at the club as a Maguire understudy. But Maguire's not missed a game, so I don't think Lindelof's going to get much game time. But by we need, we need a version of Maguire with Bai's attributes with his physicality, with his athleticism, with his presence and power and the weaknesses that Maguire has in his game, you, you, look, you, you shouldn't really have to sign an £80 million defender and then sign another defender to cover up for his weaknesses. That, that in itself is a problem. But it's a problem that Manchester United have, so therefore it's a problem that Manchester United need to solve. And for me, that comes in signing a new centre-back. And I don't know who that's going to be. Obviously, not Urban Mancano. He's gone to Bayern Munich, which... I expected, you expected, everyone expected. Let's see 
who we go for because there's no way that United can go into next season wanting to challenge for the Premier League without signing a new top class centre back. And for me, a defensive midfielder as well. It's as simple as that. But do you agree with me? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you think about Gary Neville's comments on Lindelof, on Maguire, on De Gea, on their dominance or lack thereof. Do you think he's right and fair in his, his assessment and his analysis of what United need to do to improve it? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I enjoy doing these videos, so make sure you drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new in town. But let me know what you think in the comments.